Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Ministries of Hope Christian Church. Let us go ahead and pray and get into this meet this morning. I am Reverend Thompson, amen and let us pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for being here with us this morning, Lord. I ask that you use all of me, Father God, past, present, and future in this moment, Lord. Everything that was studied, you bring it back to remembrance. All of it, Father God, give me things that I didn't study, Father God, all to work together for your glory, Lord. I thank you right now, Father God, that you cover my mind, cover my heart, cover my mouth, Lord, and every word that proceedeth out of my mouth be thus, saith the Lord. I thank you as your word goes forth, Father God. It goes forth on receptive ears, receptive heart, and understanding minds, Father God. I thank you right now that you touch everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God, so that they're able to understand at their level of understanding, Lord. Meet them where they're at like only you can, Father God, because you know every heart, Father God. So I thank you right now as we join into your word and partake together, Lord, that we all leave here better. We all leave here with understanding as you would have us to see fit, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us at Ministries of Hope Christian Church. This morning, we're coming out of the book of Acts, which is chapter 11, um, and it's Matthew. It's in the New Testament, so you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. Amen. So um, as you turn there, um, Ministries of Hope Christian Church is under the leadership of senior pastor Reverend Flory Williams. As I always say, I thank God for her. She is a true example of God's faithfulness and um, in this earth, amen. And she is truly a vessel that is sold out for God. So I thank her so much for being who she is called to be in God, amen, that she answered, amen, um, the call that God gave on her life. Um, I want to give honor to my husband and my children, amen. I thank God for them and the lights they are in my life and in this world, amen. And God continue to grow and prosper them. Amen. In his word. Amen. I want to give honor to all of the other leaders of ministries of Hope Christian Church, as well as our members, and as well as those joining us today, members and those on this line. I thank you so much for being with us. Let us partake in this word together this morning. Hopefully that gave you a chance to turn. Amen. To Acts chapter 11 in the New Testament. And we're going to get started. Amen. So we're reading verses 1 through 18. I'm going to take it chunk by chunk and pull out some things. Amen. Um, and we'll go from there. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is giving you a little bit of background. Amen. This is a time where um, Saul, who we know as Peter, um, Saul, who was uh, um, on the Damascus Road, God is you know, put the scales over his eyes and all of that. And he was brought in. And this is the first couple of miracles that he did as believers, um, as a believer of God. Amen. Because he was persecuting Christians prior to. Amen. So we're going to get into this in Jewish believers challenge, Peter. Um, and in verse 11, and this is uh, verse 11 goes from chapter 10. So after we're done here today, you can go back and read chapter 10, but I'm going to give you the gist of it in here because it kind of gives a synopsis of it. Amen. So verse one, um, of chapter 11. And as always, I'm reading out of the King James Version, unless I otherwise state. All right. It says, the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Now, um, God had sent these things to him in a dream. Um, and then he sent three uh, men to him who were to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The power of the spirit of God. Amen. So we're going to keep going um, because it goes into there. So I'll read until it gets there. I think that's how we should do it. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord. And when uh, verse two, and when Peter was come up to the Jer to Jerusalem, they that were uh, of the circumcision contended with him. Now, as we remember, if you're walking with us during Bible study, <laughs> amen, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, amen, is where we've gotten up to and we're entering Joshua, if not this morning, next study, amen. But um, so if you remember in Leviticus and you remember in Genesis where they were circumcised and the first one who God gave that circumcision to was Abraham, amen. It wasn't necessarily Moses because we see here in um the New Testament where they talk about Moses gave us circumcision and it really wasn't, it was Abraham. He was doing what his forefathers did. But um, Abraham, what God told Abraham to circumcise his whole house. And we remember it was Ishmael, his oldest. Um, he circumcised himself and all of his servants, everyone, every male in that house was circumcised, um, showing that the cutting off of flesh was the worship of God. And we know now today, amen, whether you be circumcised or uncircumcised, and that is the male part, amen. 
man, the penis that they were circumcising, but uncircumcised or circumcised, we know that circumcision of the heart today, amen, that God circumcised that heart, amen. He takes everything out that's not supposed to be there, amen. So what they were talking about was that circumcision and because they were men, they were Jewish. So this is distinguished between a believer and a non-believer at this time. If you were circumcised, you were Jewish. You know, you were known as Jewish were circumcised and those that were non-believers were uncircumcised. So it goes into that. It's important to understand that history because then you can understand it as you're reading. Amen. So we're going back to verse two again of chapter 11. And when Peter was come to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. So the Jews contended with him um, saying, thou winnest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them because at that time it was not customary tradition as we saw uh, when God gave the example of who is your neighbor amen and he gave that parable of the good Samaritan traveling on the road and the ones that passed over him and the one that actually stayed and helped him they were actually their people were um, at odds with each other so when he said who was your neighbor who was the one that helped was the one that was at odds with each other but he helped amen so we're looking at this and he's saying to them that they're saying to to him that you you sat down because it wasn't customary for them to eat with people who were non-believers amen in the gist of that amen we can go further into that but i'm not in verse 3 saying that went unto men uncircumcised and did eat with them and then verse 4 but peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them saying i was in the city of Joppa praying and in the trance, I saw a vision and a certain vessel descended and it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by the four corners and it came even, even to me. And we're going to pause there. Amen. Cause there's a lot of meat right there. Amen. Now, see, at this time, God gave him this vision. God gave him as he was dreaming. God gave them his, his drink, this dream. And he told them, you know, he told him, Peter, eat. And it was of this unclean meat. And Peter told him, listen, I ain't never put anything in my mouth that was unclean. Why? Did, um, I'm not, and you know, going to eat of that. No, Lord, because I've never put anything in my mouth that was unclean. And we know these are laws from Leviticus. We went over it. If you've been studying with us, those are laws from Leviticus. You understand that. So I'm not going to go further into that but um what he says right here god he tells god tells him what i have clean god's cleansed that call not thou common meaning don't you call things dirty that i've cleaned amen Amen. And when you see that symbolism, because at this time in, in chapter 10, he's like, well, what does this mean? He didn't know what this vision mean, but see already God has sent people on the way, Cornelius and them on the way because they had the laws of God. They were uncircumcised. They were believers of God, but they were uncircumcised. They didn't go through with the different parts of it. So now God has to call, was calling them deeper into their worship. Amen. So they were on their way. Amen. To Peter. Amen. So God gave him this dream and he didn't understand what the dream meant. But then when the men came, it came first full circle. So we're going to go ahead and go through this. Um, upon which, when I had found fast in my eyes, I considered and saw four footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts in verse seven. And I heard a voice saying unto me, arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, not so Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath any time entered into my mouth. Nine. But the voice answered me again from heaven. What God hath cleansed that call not common and then verse 10 and this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven and 11 and behold immediately there were three men already came unto the house as I was sent from Sisera unto me and the spirit made me go with them nothing doubting moreover these six brethren accompanied me and were entered into the man's house verse 13 and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood. So now these men had told them, listen, this is what happened. An angel that came to me when all this bright clothing and he told me that um, I need to come to you basically is what he said. He said, send them into Joppa, call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And then it says right here, Un who shall tell the words whereby that uh, thou and all thy house shall be saved. Verse 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. So he's telling them, as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on these uncircumcised men as it did us in the beginning. We were in that upper room, amen, as he did us at the beginning. And then it says in verse 16, then remembered I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, amen, because you 
you remember John was prepared away. And what John said, I love John. John said, amen. He said, um, the one who I baptized, I baptized you with water, but he's going to baptize you with fire, that Holy Ghost, right? And so then in 17, for much then as God gave them the light gift as he did us who believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God saying, then have God also the to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Amen. Amen. We took a little time, but I should have read that uh, prior to. So let's get into it because now I can just go into now you understand the fullness of um, that background. Amen. So the first thing, amen, God says is that he will answer your prayer. And we're going to go back up there to verse five. I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance, I saw a vision and a certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheep. So what he was doing, what Peter was doing was praying unto God. He was praying. Amen. There's power in prayer. So that's the first thing. Amen. And if I were to give this message a title, it's that all are welcome. Amen. All are welcome into the house of God. Amen. All are welcome. Come one, come all. Amen. Because God cares and he wants you. Amen. He don't care. He wants a willing vessel. Amen. And we're going to go deeper because right here, I was in the city of Joppa praying. I was praying some things you're looking for God to answer, but you ain't asked him yet. He says, you have not because you asked not amen so when you looking for God to answer you amen you got to go into prayer you got to start talking to God you got to be in commune with God you got to summons his presence amen in your life you can't sit here and think that you're going to get anything from God doubting as it says in the new testament amen coming to him boldly to his throne let any man you can't get double-minded you can't get anything from God without believing first so you got to sit here and go into prayer, believing and knowing that he is hearing you and he is answering you. Amen. Because he says his prayers, his ears are attentive to the righteous. Amen. Amen. And then the righteous prayer availeth much. Amen. So you got, got to believe, amen, that you are sitting there. You have to ask. He's in prayer. And then what makes it great? Amen. Because God will for all of those. I, that's why I love, I say all the time when you go into prayer, amen, and you start, Lord, connect me with my destiny connect. Because it's a destiny connector. It's someone who is about to change that course. Amen. God is using to change the course in your life, to take you deeper into your assignment, to take you deeper into what he wants for you. So now here we have Paul was, Peter was in prayer. Amen. Excuse me. Peter was in prayer. But if you go to verse 10, uh, chapter 10 and verse two, it says, and devout man, and these, these were the three men who came unto them. It's telling about them for so. So now it says right here in verse two, Two, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms, meaning money, to the people. Amen. Meaning he sold into people. Amen. Those who did not have. Amen. And then it says, and prayed to God always. And he saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel came, uh, angel of God came in to him and sang unto him Cornelius. And when he looked to him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? Amen. And he said unto him, the, thy prayers of thine alms are come for a memorial unto God. And now send men to Joppa and call, call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Amen. So this is what Peter was just telling what we just read in verses uh, chapter 11. Amen. He's telling about what they said, because when they came to him, they told him everything. This angel came and showed himself before me. And God told me to come and see about you. Amen. So when you're looking here, he was praying. So you have Peter praying and then you have Cornelius praying. Amen. And God is answering their prayers. Amen. But see, the thing is, is that you've got to have your heart knowing God's word. Amen. Because in order to know when God answers your prayer, some prayers God has answered, but you don't hear it because it's not the way that you think that he's supposed to be answering. So you praying to God and you hoping he answers in a certain way. But when God comes through in the way that it's ordained for him to answer, you can't identify it because that's why God, uh, that's why God gave Peter, that vision first, eat this unclean thing, because see, these are traditions that are put there. God said he didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill and show you a better way. So therefore, these people, I, before God, mm, 
Mm. Before God showed them, amen, he showed them this is what you had to do. That's why he gave you the law, because it was the example to show that the law cannot bring you into right standing with God. It's in combination. How you live is that law, but then that belief comes that grace of that repentance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see right here. So we have it there. When you answer in that prayer, God will answer, but he's going to answer in his way. And you got to believe it. And you've got to go that power of prayer. Amen. And then the second thing he gave me right here, he says, because that's why he gave him Peter slay and eat because he had to go through that tradition. P Peter had that tradition to understand. Wait a minute. I'm not supposed to be eating unclean things, Lord. I'm not. And he had a heart to believe that Lord is this. But God said, no, 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 Peter. No. What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. I've cleansed these people who you have seen uncircumcised. So you feel like you can't associate with. Don't call them common. Because he didn't understand that's what the dream was. Amen cut this off. Amen. He didn't understand that's what the dream was until they came to him and he heard them. He received them. Well, the God said he heard them say, well, then I'm going to go ahead. And as I'm speaking to you, God has fallen. The Holy Spirit has fallen on them. This is him talking to those who felt the same way he did. And see, the same way God forgave him, that's why God told them, remember how you were in Egypt. Remember how you were in Egypt. Remember how you were before I called you out of your mess. Remember how you were like the prodigal son down there eating slop with the pigs before I called you out. Remember them days and have grace on those who are still there and don't know no better because you didn't know no better. And what's worse, you prodigal son, you knew better and you chose it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember. So he goes on as I began to speak in verse 15 and the Holy Ghost fell on them as it did us at the beginning. As it fell on us at the beginning. Amen. Amen. So the next thing God has is lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He's going to direct your path. If he was directing these men path to intertwine with each other. Prayer. I pray for you as you pray for me. I pray for others. We pray for those going through the same thing. That's going through the same thing as us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints need to get on their job and pray. Amen. 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 Because you hearing it. Amen. And then I love it too, because if you look at it, those, oh, those who he's speaking to, Peter is telling, amen. They let him finish. They didn't go into judgment. They didn't answer this matter before they heard it. They said, look, we heard right there at the beginning. It says the brethren that were in Judea heard of the Gentiles and also received God, the word of God. Then they said to Peter, look, Peter, we heard you was eating with people who were uncircumcised like Peter. Tell, tell us more about this because uh, that ain't the way it's supposed to go. That ain't the way the law goes. Amen. <laughs> but as God said, was the Sabbath made for man or was it made for me? Because he was healing folks on the Sabbath, Jesus said. But we're going to go ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. So you looking at this, they hearing that. But they didn't. I love it because they didn't go into further judgment. And see, this is the thing that when you're in disagreement with folks and you and you're both believers, you got to go into prayer. They didn't go. They heard what he had to say, because as Proverbs says, it's folly to a man who answereth the matter before he hears the whole thing before he hears it. It's folly to you if you answer it and you see those when you're going out and they telling people to un ex explain, but they're not listening to understand. They're listening to respond. So every word, as soon as they hear the wrong word come out of a person's mouth, they go into cutting them off and haven't heard the person's whole whole thing because if they had heard the whole thing they probably would have left with understanding they all would have left with understanding which they did do as you can see here then it says in verse 18 when they heard these things they held their peace hallelujah Mm, mm, thank you, Lord, because I love it because he says even God will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. 
So they may have came up with wrath thinking they about to come against you. But it says when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God saying, then have God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Because see, at that time, they believed that God came to save the Jews and the Jews only. But as we know, ha, huh, in Isaiah 65, verse 1, and let's turn there. I'm, I'm going to turn there. Put it in your notes. Isaiah's in the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. I love that book of Isaiah. It's all about prophecy. And then you see all that fulfillment coming in there. Amen. So we have Isaiah, verse 65. Um, and then it's verse 1 of 65. And it reads... I am, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Hallelujah. And you can keep reading that. But God said he came to show himself to people who weren't even looking for them. Isn't that a Gentile? Because that's the difference between a Jew and a Gentile. Gentile is just, it just means an unbeliever, an unbeliever, a non-believer. That's what Gentile means is an, a non-believer. And now I'm showing myself because he told them, I'm going to make you jealous. As he told him in the Old Testament, God, Jesus didn't come to destroy, to fulfill, right? He told him, I'll make you jealous over me because now you played with me as your God, as your Lord and your God. I'm going to show myself to a people who weren't even looking for me. I'm going to show myself to them non-believers who weren't even looking for me. Hallelujah. Then he goes on. <laughs> then he goes on, which is good because he showed me this the other night. Amen. Amen. Then he goes on into Malachi. Put it in your notes. Malachi chapter one, verse 11. And I, I was like, oh, Lord, bad to the bone, right? Malachi chapter one, verse 11. And I, I was studying, you know, and it says right here, for from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name and pour and, and a poor offer, a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, said the Lord of hosts. So he even goes, I'm showing myself and then my name's going to be great among them because you didn't make it great among you. You play with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, woo, thank you, Lord. It's past say, and, and she quoting out of the scripture. Amen. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Amen. That that's plenty of understandings of that. You can apply that here. You could apply that to the fact that the one who is considered the greatest, greatest of these has to serve. You got to be last before you can be first. Hallelujah. There's so many meanings in God. Amen. Because you look at that. That's exactly what it was. So they glorified God after they heard the whole thing. Because then, because then Peter said, well, who am I? He said, listen, I, I felt the same way you did. But God showed me as I was praying, he put me in a trance and he showed me. I can't be choosy about what I eat because what God bless, who am I to say or call it not bless? As Balak found out over there in that desert, amen, amen, as he found out, you can't curse what God has blessed. Hallelujah. So he says right there in verse 17, then God gave them like a gift as unto us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I? Who am I? Who am I that I could withstand God? I can't contend with God because what God bless, who am I to say ain't blessed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lean not to your own understanding. That's the second thing. So the first thing we talked about was the power of prayer and God will answer in his way because as the Bible says, he is not slack in answering or in time as man count time. But then the second thing was lean not to your own understanding, but in all that ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. That is word right there. And then the third thing, the example he gave me, verse 10, amen. And it says, and this was done three times. And all were drawn up again into heaven because he had that vision, that word three times. He gave him that example about eating three times. And then I was like, Ooh, God. Mm. And then he sent three men to him. 
It confirmed confirmation. The third thing is confirmation comes in threes. Amen. Amen. And put this in your note because I'm going to give you a couple things. And this is the last thing. And we're going to uh, finish off right now is that confirmation comes into threes. Amen. You're going to hear it because God says he confirms it all by himself. He confirms itself. So uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. Verse 1. Amen. And we're going to go there. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse one. This is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Amen. Now hold that. Put it in your notes. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse one. And I want, I want to go with, walk with me here. Okay. So it says, this is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Amen. So we know the word is God and the word was God and the word was with God. Amen. So we going to Hebrews chapter six, verse 13. Amen. Put it in your notes. I'm turning there. Hebrews, amen, chapter 6, verse 16. I'm, I'm at chapter 6, verse 13, amen. And we're going to go there. And it says, amen, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no, no greater, he swear by himself. God said he swears by himself. Amen. So when I say that word confirms itself, it will swear by himself, by itself, confirm it in other places, confirm it in three different places. Amen. And it will give you that understanding that is meant for you. Amen. And then God goes on. He's bad to the bone. As I said, we're going back to Isaiah. Now put this in your notes and you're going to study it later. Amen. I'm trusting God that you're going to go back and look at this later. Amen. Uh, chapter 45, verse 23. And this is where we're finishing off. Amen. And we'll bring it home. Amen. Chapter 45, verse 23. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Amen. Surely shall one say, in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall man come and all that are in, uh, incensed against him shall be ashamed. Amen. 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 So God swears by himself. He give it three, confirm it in three. And it's funny that he sent three to him. Amen. And then he gave him three visions. Amen. Amen. To confirm this thing to him. Amen. So when you're looking at that, amen, that confirmation is going to come. But you're not going to know that it's confirmed unless you look. Because even then, if Paul, Peter, sorry, I keep saying Paul, Peter, Amen. He said right there in verse 16, and we're back in Acts chapter 11, verse 16. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. He had the vision. God had answered his prayer and gave it to him three times in the vision. But he didn't understand it until he was acting out the word of God going about leading that way, leaning not to his own understanding, but in all his ways, acknowledging God and having God direct his path. And as he was moving about being directed by God, then the under remembrance came. That word came. Ha! I remember now as I'm looking at them being given that Holy Spirit as we did. I remember now what the word said, what John had said. That he gonna baptize you with fire. Ha, ah, you gotta know God's word in order for him to confirm it. As we started off at the beginning, amen. And this is where I close it, amen, amen. How are you to know God has answered your prayer unless you're supping with them, amen. How can he call things back to your remembrance if you ain't put nothing in your arsenal? This word is our weapon. So if you ain't putting nothing in, how can you? It's just like a bank. Thank you, Lord. If you go and deposit stuff in there, right? When it's time for you to withdraw from there, you got something to withdraw. But if you just open the bank account and never put nothing in, and then now when trials and tribulations come, you call yourself pulling out savings and you ain't got nothing in there, what you got to go for? 
Amen. Get into this word. Hide it deep in your heart so that he has stuff to call on. Seek me and I'll be found. I can talk to you throughout as you move in this earth. I can show you my word and what it means as the Holy Spirit said. He'll give you understanding. He'll lead and guide you into all truth. But you got to know the truth in order to be led by the truth. You got to seek him unless to find him. Hallelujah. 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 If you feel God confirming in your spirit, you've just been restless and you're like, listen, I want to know him on a greater level. Amen. I want you to say these words after me. Amen. Because Romans chapter 10 says, but what saith that the word is near thee. God is near thee. Amen. He is near you. Amen. It says, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. That's what we talk about all the time. He is there for you. All you got to do is answer. Amen. All you got to do is answer. And we know that because Revelations chapter three, verse 20 says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice, if you have heard his voice and it says, and you open up the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. I'm going to commune with you. I'm going to commune with you and you with me. If you hear, if you've been hearing God's voice ringing out in your spirit, in your mind and in your soul and in your heart, and you want to know him on a deeper level. Even if you have turned away from God and you said, I did church, but I didn't have relationship and I want relationship with him. I want to know him. I want to know him without a doubt in my mind that he's with me. Amen. Because God says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You invite him in. He going to come in and he ain't leaving. Amen. You going to have to get up from the table unless before he leave. Amen. As he said, he going to come in and eat with you. So he going to eat with you until you get up from that table. Because he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he going to be sitting there. Amen. Amen. And then he says in verse 9 of Romans chapter 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Amen. God said, listen, I can't go around my law. Because once I speak it, it's established as we saw. But he said, if I could find a way to give that punishment to myself. Because they were all condemned. We were all condemned to hell. But God said, if I love them so much. That if I could find a way to give that punishment to myself, insert Jesus. Insert Jesus. He took it for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that whosoever shall believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you want that, I want you to say this prayer with me. Amen. Say, God, I believe in you with all my heart. I believe you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins and raised him from the dead on the third day. Forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me, Lord, and dwell in me. I exchange my will this day for your will for my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer to me, welcome into the kingdom of God. Every angel in heaven is rejoicing. Amen. As the Bible says, rejoice when one soul comes to God. Amen. So I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And I want to offer this appeal for you this morning that call in. Amen. Call. Don't be ashamed. Call. I'm on the line. We have privacy. We can talk. We can commune. Amen. Get on the line if you just need prayer. If you need someone to talk to, if you just need wisdom-filled advice, 
whatever you need, I'm here for you. Amen. I'm here to serve and I'm ready and willing and happy to serve. Amen. It won't go further than that phone call. Amen. Trust me. Amen. Uh, call into this number is 605-313-5388. It's going to ask for an access code. That access code is 379-088-POUND. Amen. So that phone number is 605-313-5388. Access code 379-088-POUND. Amen. Get off this line, click off and call right now. I'm waiting. I'll be there until 1120. Amen. To hear from you. Amen. Amen. Also, um, um, we're here on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Bible study. Continue with us as we walk through that mighty man of valor, val, uh, valor uh, Joshua. Amen. We're going to be having a good time in Joshua and I'm so excited because I love me some Joshua. Amen. Amen. And and then um, also, if you need a church home, get on that line. Amen. There's no distance in God. We can accept you. Amen. Amen. Also, our sermons are live. You're here. You should know. But 1030 a.m. Amen. On the dot on Sundays. Amen. Eastern Standard Time as well as Tuesday night prayer line. We get on with all the saints and we pray and we come to God and be able to step together to God, enter his throne boldly. Uh, agreeing with each other because we know power is in agreement. Amen. And that's from 7.30 p.m. until 8 o'clock p.m. Um, you can like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel, Ministries of Hope Christian Church on YouTube. We're also on Instagram, Ministries of Hope. Amen. On Instagram as well here on Facebook, Ministries of Hope Christian Church. Um, I thank you so much. If you would like to donate uh, to Ministries of Hope, you can always go to our website, Ministries of Hope Christian Church.com. Ministries of Hope hope to Christian Church. Dot com. Right there is a donate button. We take pay PayPal and Square Amen. And knowing that every dollar is going into God's kingdom, not us personally, but it's going to be distributed out for all those who are in need. So we thank you so much for being here with us um, and joining us this morning. May God continue to bless you. And as always, may you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. God, we thank you for this word that has gone forth. We ask, Father God, that Satan does not rob them of this word, but it gets sown and hidden in their heart so that it bears much much fruit for you, Father God, and it's gone forth on fertile ground. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy studying. Let me know if you have any questions. Amen. Inbox us right here, or you can email us at Ministries of Hope Christian Church. It's mohccprayerrequest.com. I'm at uh, mohccprayerrequest at gmail.com. I check it every day, pray over it every day. You can send your prayer requests there or your questions. Thank you so much. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Be safe this Memorial Day holiday. God bless you.